Hi, I'm Paul Rudolavich from Synergy Electrical Sales. Today we're going to cover the components of a Lutron Graphic Eye QS system. There's a few varieties of the Lutron Graphic Eye. Again, this video is going to cover the Lutron Graphic Eye QS. I'm going to show you the components and how they connect. As always, consult the manufacturer's installation instructions to make sure you have it done properly. All right, so this is the unit. This is the main unit for the Lutron Graphic Eye QS. Let's spin it around here fits into a four gang box. Spin it back around to the front. We've got our scene controllers on the right here. This right here is an IR receiver. We have the ability to connect a remote to the unit. Flip up the top. On the left, we've got our zones of lighting, one, two, three, for this particular unit. This is where we could set a time clock if we need it, do the programming, and we've got what we call our master raise and lower for all the lighting together on the unit as well. Spin it around. The unit itself gets powered by 120 volts. Again, just 120. And that wires in here where we've got our line. So 120 volts, neutral, and a ground into the system. This unit has the ability to dim small forward phase loads directly from the unit. That's where we've got these labeled 1, 2, and 3, where we would use the same neutral and our dimmed hot output for small forward phase loads. If we have larger loads, we bring a module into here, which we call the power module. This is the Lutron PHPM module. And what it does is it allows us to do larger loads and also different types of loads. Um, this module can do reverse phase dimming, and that's why we have it in place here. What I'm going to show you is how it would connect. So what we're doing here is we take the same neutral from the graphic eye, and we're going to connect it up here to where we've got our control neutral. And then we would take the dimming signal, uh, which is a line voltage, 120 volt dimming signal, and correct it, connect it here where it says zone in. So this graphic eye would send a signal to here. The lights would actually get powered from a different circuit coming in here where it's hot, neutral, and then dim top would be our load side out to our fixtures as well. This one mounts in a um, two gang box. They make a version of this called a GRX TVI, which is a larger unit, but it functions the same way and does zero to 10 volt dimming. So that's how we'd handle our loads. Lutron makes a graphic eye with ecosystem for Lutron drivers. Um, that would be separate from this exact system that we're showing you here today. So the main unit, one thing that's often overlooked with it is it has the ability to communicate with different devices wirelessly. So we could take a Neutron motion sensor, it looks like this, can connect directly to this unit. We can do multiple sensors to this unit if needed, as long as we're in a 60 by 60 foot room where this unit is mounted. If we go to a larger room, we have ways to accommodate that as well. All right, we can do that. Another nice feature is we can connect our Lutron Pico wall stations as well. We can connect those to the system as well wirelessly, again, in that 60 by 60 foot room. And we could also connect a Lutron daylight sensor in there as well um, for added functionality and in some cases code compliance. So the wireless connections. And the last part we're going to show you is wired connections. So if I again spin the unit around to the back here, we've got um, communication right here. So you see where it says common, 24 volts, mux and mux bar. That's where we can communicate and add into the system. So we have additional wall stations that look like this. We can put them in there as well, and they would wire directly. We can do up to three wall stations from here. If we want to do additional wall stations or components, we put a power booster in. Right here where it says 24 volts, we have the ability to wire in um, wired motion sensors if we need to as well, or just um, some common um, dry contacts in as well. So we've got that. Here is for an IR receiver. That's not used very much anymore, but we've got that there as well. Um, and then this is just going to show you again the wire that we use to connect it right in this case we've got two number 12s and two number 22s twisted and shielded uh, for short distances you can do a lower gauge wire if you need but check the specs on that before you do it and then the last part is we have components that look like this this one does um, uh, in uh, dry contact input and output to the system as we need. Again, it wires over that four conductor into here, which I'm showing with my thumb. And then we can do our inputs and outputs on this unit. We've got dip switches up top here. 
so we can set up different functionality depending on what we need. There's also two other devices that look like this. One does DMX lighting for color changing lighting, and the other one allows AV integration. As always, thanks for watching.